from NBC News, this is Today with Matt Lauer and Meredith Vieira. We're back now at 741, and this morning on Today's Health, we're talking about mindless eating. Did you know that you make more than 200 decisions about food every day? The bad news is most of the time you don't even realize you're doing it. You put the food in your mouth, and then you discover your clothes no longer fit. The numbers are shocking. Two-thirds of Americans are either overweight or obese. And with meals like this, it's no wonder our waistlines are expanding. That may be an average meal for some people at a buffet, but that is why millions of Americans are overweight. Buffets are just one example of how our minds trick us into eating more than we need. Yeah, I can't wait to have the ice cream after we eat. A plate like this is more than double the calories of your average dinner. One of these plates is easily 1,500 calories. And figure a typical dinner should be five to 800 calories. And that isn't even considering dessert, appetizers, beverages. So why does some overeat at an all-you-can-eat? You can get two or three meals for $10, $11 here. So it's well worth it. Every time I come to a buffet, I pretty much eat two to three plates. Um, and then dessert. If you come in later in the morning, you will see people like staying for the double meal. You should come in for breakfast, and it'll be the end of breakfast, and then they'll stay there for lunch. But it's not just economics. People eat more at a buffet because there's so much more to eat. Having so many options affects our judgment. More food options make us want to eat more. So the more taste there is, more flavor, you know, whether we see it, we smell it, you know, it makes us want to try it. Candy marketers know this. When faced with multicolored M&Ms, the more variety, the more you eat. And the mind plays other tricks as well. Subway, eat fresh. Jared may have lost 100 pounds on the Subway diet. Later, big guy. But what he's not saying, according to new research, because the food seems healthy, diners at Subway underestimate the calories they're consuming and compensate later with more snacks than McDonald's customers might. I probably will eat dessert. Dessert or no dessert, just one of the several hundred food decisions we make every day. Brian Wansink is a food psychologist and author of Mindless Eating. Hey, Brian, nice to have you it's here. It's great to be here, thanks. It's just astonishing how what we put in our mouth, it seems, is determined less by the physical cues from our body than the psychological cues from our body. It's amazing. We're a nation of mindless eaters, regardless of how tuned in we think we are, a combination of two things happens. First of all, we're very suggestible and we're very distracted when we eat. The combination of those things leads all of this stuff to influence And us. we got Thanksgiving around the corner, so there's a Thanksgiving warning for people. <laughs> we're going to give some examples. You turn your lab at Cornell sometimes into yeah. a mini restaurant. Yeah. And you experiment. You make the, the people guinea pigs. Talk to me about the experiment using the label on the wine and the name of a wine. Oh, that's a great example. Two identical wines. All we do is change the label. One says it's from North Dakota, a place not known for wine. Right. The other says it's from California, a place and, known for wine. And what happens when people consume it? Well, what happens is not just do they like the wine they think is from California better, but they also end up eating a lot more of the food and they like the food more if they think it's a California wine. And, and that translates into just about everything. Here's That's another example. Take, we're going to take a look at, at two versions of a menu. Kay. Okay. First we're going to describe the food in version A in a very simple term. You've got red beans with rice, seafood filet, grilled chicken, and chocolate pudding. Now talk to me about menu B. What we see at menu B is all we have to do is add a couple descriptive words, call it traditional Cajun red beans with rice or succulent Italian seafood filet. And it, not only do people buy a lot more of it, but they end up rating the taste of the food better, they end up rating the cook as being a better cook. And it's just words. It's just words, but that, I mean, those are great things that you can even do as a Thanksgiving cook. You can add a couple uh, words to a turkey and make it taste a whole lot better. I started the show by showing <laughs> these two different glasses on the end of the table oh. here and I asked Meredith if you were served the same amount in each one, do you think you would end up drinking more out of which glass? Talk to me about the results there. It's unbelievable. When we do our seminars, we bring people and we have them pour glasses and everybody will pour about 32% more into that short white glass. Why? Because, well, we don't compensate for the width. Instead, we always look at the height as we pour. But we did the same study with Philadelphia bartenders and they even poured 28% more into the short white glass. So in other words, you're going to pour more into the glass because it does, it, it, if you pour the same amount, it go, it's farther from the top and it yeah, seems emptier. That, that's exactly right. And it's just another example of how the environment sort of tricks us into pouring more, serving more, 
and eventually eating a lot more. Carry the example over to the popcorn and the containers here on the table. <laughs> Same thing with popcorn. We uh, did some studies outside of Chicago and what we've done uh, in movie theaters. We give these people a large bucket or small bucket, but it's stale five-day-old popcorn. Even though it's terrible popcorn, even though these people finished eating within 20 minutes of coming to the restaurant, uh, movie theater, they end up eating about 35% uh, more from the bigger bucket than the smaller well, But that, to me, that one's common sense because if you're sitting there with it in your lap, it, you're almost not even eating. It's more of a keeping your hands busy thing. It's reflex. Yeah. No, and you, the more you have, the more you're going to eat. Yeah, and that's the thing with mind, mindless eating is we don't think about it. So the last thing we want to do is say, how many calories am I eating? Instead, we just want to change our environment so it works for us rather than works against and us. And so, so your tips are here real quick. You say, first of all, you can reprogram yourself. And you want people to become an illusionist when they prepare and present. <laughs> food. How do they do well, that? Well, come on, there's eight ounces of spaghetti in both these plates. But if you were, uh, that looks like a great sized portion. If you had this big plate like this, man, we'd be both be adding more spaghetti there because it just doesn't look like enough. So, so use a smaller bowl, put the same amount in, you're going to feel like you're serving yourself more and it's going to feel probably more satiated at the end of that meal. Well, it's an easy thing to do. In our book, we show that these people are just as happy eating a smaller plate is here. And the big warehouse stores, the Costco's and the Sam Clubs are so popular, you end up getting pretzels that could feed a neighborhood, and you say, don't keep them in the house like this. No, I mean, where, where do you stop when you're eating this? You're only going to stop when you hit the bottom. The nice thing is if you rebag it, I mean, we've been working with some companies to try to get their employees to eat less and save in health care costs. Yeah, but are you spending more on the baggies than you saved on the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on the bulk at the Sam's Club? <laughs> it's interesting stuff, Brian. Thanks very much. And again, important to keep in our minds as we head into the holiday season where we tend to eat mindlessly anyway. Brian, good to have you here.